Hello class, this is a brief video providing a quick overview of the documentary hypothesis, which is also called the JEDP theory, that we will be covering this week, and some of the basic arguments both for and against this theory. The documentary hypothesis was first created by German-born biblical scholar Julius Wellhausen in the 19th century. The idea of this hypothesis is that the Bible's first five books, the Pentateuch, uh, were formed through a very long process uh, over many decades and even centuries. Scholars who support this theory affirm that the ancient writers of the Bible were numerous men who wrote the documents of poetry, prose, history, narrative, and law uh, over many years. Uh, the, the scholars who support the documentary hypothesis are therefore uh, in stark contrast to the traditional understanding of mosaic authorship. The opponents of the documentary hypothesis have traditionally been fundamentalist and evangelical Christians and ortho Orthodox Jewish scholars. These two groups adhere to the traditional interpretation that the first five books of the Bible were written and compiled by Moses. The four sources that are a part of the documentary hypothesis theory are the J source, which is also called the Yahwist source. Uh, representing texts that seem to emphasize the name of God, uh, Yahweh, the E source, which is also called the Elohist source, because this source prefers the name Elohim for God, the P source, which is the priestly source, which emphasizes uh, cultic worship practices, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the Tabernacle, etc., and finally the D source, which is the Deuteronomist source, uh, and also includes uh, almost the entirety of the book of Deuteronomy. The documentary hypothesis uh, boasts linguistic evidence supported by the historical development of the Hebrew language and grammar. Scholars say that the sources of J and E uh, simply use an older and more archaic form of Hebrew, whereas the P source and the D source, which are later sources, use a more refined um, form of the Hebrew language. Scholars who support the documentary hypothesis also claim that there are certain words and phrases that occur disproportionately in certain texts within the Pentateuch. They claim that uh, there are certain content patterns and themes such as a repetition of the name of Yahweh in certain passages and in certain books, the prevalence of sacred worship objects such as the Ark of the Covenant and others which are found primarily and very heavily in books like Leviticus, uh, they attribute these to different sources and thereby uh, attribute this to the legitimacy of the JEDP theory. In addition, the J and E sources have been traced to the division of the kingdom of Judah in the south and Israel in the north, thereby making both of these texts somewhat political in use. According to scholars who support this hypothesis, the J source uh, developed in the southern kingdom of Judah as it has numerous elements that connect it with Judah. The E source has developed in the northern kingdom of Israel and has numerous elements that connect it there. Both of these sources are used to legitimize uh, the uh, various kingdoms, uh, the two opposing kingdoms in a way, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. The P source has elements that uh, connect it to the time of Hezekiah, uh, king of Judah who reigned between 715 B.C. and 687 B.C. Now the P-source is concerned with the priesthood and it makes its distinctions between the Aaronid priests, uh, and those who are descendants of Aaron, and all other Levites. Only priests who are direct descendants of Aaron may serve as priests in the temple and in the tabernacle, and the L Levites must serve as lesser clergy. The book of Second Chronicles reports that this distinction was a development during the reign of King Hezekiah. The D source, the final source, has been associated with the period of King Josiah in the southern kingdom, uh, somewhere between the years uh, 640 and 609 BC. Now the D source takes its name from the book of Deuteronomy primarily, and scholars have argued that Deuteronomy is a part of a seven book work that tells the history of Israel from Moses to the exile in Babylon. These books are Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, 
1st and 2nd Samuel, and 1st and 2nd Kings. This work collectively is known as the Deuteronomistic History. Scholars who support the documentary hypothesis see all of these books uh, as belonging to a single large work that was continually revised and added to over time. Although there is persuasive evidence in support of the documentary hypothesis, a growing number of evangelical scholars and conservatives are finding themselves in disagreement with this hypothesis. But just as there is a large amount of evidence in favor and in support of the hypothesis, there is also a large number of holes in the hypothesis's argument. Some evidence against the documentary hypothesis is as follows. Where the documentary hypothesis sees the two names of God, leading therefore to two separate sources, we know that the names of God actually have different meanings. Elohim, for example, is used to refer to God as the almighty creator of the universe, while Yahweh is the covenant name of God, which is reserved for specific situations in which uh, some covenant engagement between God and mankind is involved. So the different uses of God's name in Genesis and throughout the Torah uh, have nothing to do with two separate authors. It's simply one author referring to God by his different names and his different aspects. Proponents of the documentary hypothesis also use the existence of doublets or parallel accounts of the same story to give weight to two different sources. Uh, they argue that when one story is found twice uh, in the Old Testament in two, uh, different, uh, two different forms, two slightly different forms, uh, there must therefore be two different authors. And when the final redactor or compiler or editor uh, of the Old Testament that we have today saw these two stories, uh, he simply didn't know what to do with them and he stuck them together and that's why we have uh, two uh, repeating or parallel stories. However, Gleason Archer, a biblical scholar, writes that this recapitulation or repeating of stories in a slightly different way was widely practiced in ancient Semitic literature. The author would first introduce his account with a short statement summarizing the whole transaction, and then he would follow it up with a more detailed and circumstantial account when dealing with matters of special importance. So Gleason Archer is saying that, uh, for example, Genesis 1 is a uh, very general uh, account of creation, where Genesis 2 is a more specific account uh, of a specific uh, issue within Genesis 1. Genesis 2 is therefore explaining a part of Genesis 1 and is not simply the result of uh, another author or a different story of creation. One of the major criticisms of the documentary hypothesis from both evangelical Christians and Orthodox Jews is that it casts doubt on biblical miracles and formerly established biblical history and events. It casts doubt on the biblical narrative and causes people to ask such questions like, did the Red Sea really part, or did the children of Israel simply walk across on a sandbar at a low tide? The documentary hypothesis often invites a reconsideration of the historicity of biblical events, and since the documentary hypothesis states that the Torah was written by many different people at different times, it may make one wonder such questions as, are biblical personalities real? Did the exodus ever actually occur? The issue of the documentary hypothesis has been a hotly contested topic in biblical scholarship and research since its conception, with believers on both sides of the argument, those who are in support of it and those who deny it vehemently. So, which side of the argument do you land on? Shalom.